Alright, alright, alright. Welcome to FKU Africa Podcast. This is Madneza F8. As you know, I'm always bringing you nice guests. I'm going to be bringing you now another brother from my other mother, my brother, uh, Arnold. How are you, brother? I'm doing very well in yourself. No, I'm doing good, man. I cannot really complain. How has been the, the situation with COVID? How has, how has it been? affecting you in your life um, yeah it was very difficult it was a very difficult moment yeah not just for myself but for millions of other people and not just from south africa or africa but across the world mm. but we are hopeful because things are beginning to shape up now and we continue yeah. to hope that things will normalize in the near future rather than later yeah, do you think we will we, we'll see the word normal again with this thing, man? I don't, I don't know. I don't think we, we're going to be seeing the normal. Because uh, I think things will, will take too long now for people to stop wearing masks and all these kind of things. Don't you think? Uh, I don't think so. I'm optimistic that <laughs> yeah. things are going to be fine. Remember the, swine, the Spanish flu yes. of 1918, mm, mm, right? Mm. It killed over 50 million people. Yeah, but it yeah, eventually it became a thing of the past. So we just need to follow the rules. Mm. Everybody else, our health is in our own hands. Mm. An individual is responsible for the health of everybody. Yes. Mm. What you do helps the next person. If everybody does what is right, eventually mm. everyone will be okay, and this coronavirus will effectively be managed. Yeah, I think so. Also. But when it comes to Africa. Uh, uh, let's say, not, not, not even in such a region, like in Africa, do you think there was a good cooperation with government dealing with this uh, pandemic in, in the governance, like working together, making sure that they are following the same sort of rules as Africans and helping, helping each other out and those kind of things? Uh, to some extent, I would say yes. Some big economies, usually were the first ones mm. to put up measures and other smaller countries followed. But however, they did not work together as much as we would, would have anticipated. Yeah. Africa is fragmented. We are so... Uh, we do have an individualistic approach kind of In everything. Things. Mm. Some is not... Uh, of our own making. Yes. Remember, the very Africa that we have is not of our own making. The yes. artificial boundaries that we have. Hmm. So, in as much as we would have hoped that our leaders would have uh, worked together so closely, to some extent, it was also not their problem. Yeah. Because there are countries like Tanzania. The hmm. economy of Tanzania right now is running in full throttle. Hmm. They didn't go into a full lockdown like we did here in South Africa. Yeah. Yeah, say. Yeah. But look at the number of deaths. Mm. Almost the same as South Africa, they are even slightly less. Yeah. So it was some of the measures that were taken were well, not really necessary. Were, were a bit harsh. harsh. Yeah, yes. were a bit harsh. Because yeah. the countries that did not look down, look at even at Burundi. Mm. They held their elections. There was no lockdown. All they did was to close their borders and yeah. the economy continued to function. Yeah. And look where they are now. They are, they are Very limited numbers. They are still doing good as well. Yes. I, 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 I'd like to think this thing, somewhere, somehow, it was overhyped, and the governance in Africa, in most African countries, saw it as a measure to practice their powers, to pre practice their control. Because it's very nice for the leaders to tell, to tell people what to do. So, especially when there's a scare in everyone, when there's something big as this pandemic, that would scare everyone. It's it's really nice. It's easy for them to say, okay, we are cancelling this. We are limiting these rights. We are not be able, gonna be able to do this. Not gonna be able to walk outside. As you saw that in many videos, that the police were beating people just for sitting outside in their own houses when this thing started. Even the soldiers killed many. I think close to five people uh, in their own yards just because they didn't listen to their rules. So I I saw it as. They, they, they wanted to practice this sort of, I'm the boss, I'm telling you what to do. Even when, it, when they saw that the, the people are struggling with jobs and they are, they are losing their jobs and the economy is going to waste, 
still they couldn't like open up as fast as they could just because they want to cling on to the power um that position is the position of pessimists or the so called afro pessimists yeah. but i would want to give the leaders benefit of doubt yeah why am i saying so remember the coronavirus pandemic is the first of its kind in our lifetime seriously yes if it was something that we were used to we would say we could have learned from our mistakes past mistakes or we could have a script like mar- to copy malaria from, yeah. you say mm. so this was something totally new mm. there was some other pandemics like ebola they were not world it, over yeah there was not a, like so pandemic so somehow we could say their mistakes are genuine mm. because they didn't know it was a, a, the first time we experienced such a global pandemic yeah after the spanish flu that i talk about in 1918 that was back then mm. so things have changed now and i'm sure the mistakes were genuine yeah so when it comes to african unity i heard you were saying most of it is not on our making even the africa we are is an artificial land even the word it was given to us the word africa uh, there were no borders in mm. africa the uh, people were going as they wish wherever they wanted to go they were trading together they were enjoying the beauty of africa planting all the kind of things then people came and then they divided us as africa yes. so do you think that effect of division from many many years hundreds hundreds of years ago after we after all african countries have be, have, have got their own in, independence why is it so hard for africans to unite and trust each other and put trust in their own rather than if someone from europe would come and sell you something it would be easy for you to be want to listen but if i come to you we know we don't know each other i come to you say i know i got this i want to sell you this it will be you will be very skeptical yeah. to listen to me why is causing this thing let me say this do you know that the biggest war that the americans fought was the wars of american independence yes forget about the first world war and the second world war those mm. are mickey mouse wars when it comes to the number of americans who died in any war yeah they fought a vicious war to order to keep america together mm. meaning they understand uh, what scale numbers means mm. when it comes to economics yeah right but sadly mm. they mm. are at their instigation yeah we are fragmented yeah because they they, they know how important it is because they've done it yes so if they, we, they allow us to do it as well yes that kind of power would we would assume it would even be more than they are because africa is is got a lot of people very true in numbers yes um, and resources they also instigated the disintegration of the ussr union of soviet socialist republic mm. i don't care much about the challenges they had they could have managed them mm. because of scale now the other countries who were in the ussr are not doing good yes look at china yeah 1.3 billion people yes they were able to lift about 500 million people out of poverty over 30 years mm. it's because of numbers numbers yes yeah. so what africa needs is leaders who understand that mm. there is more to be gained than that it is than that which is lost by coming together yeah imagine 1.2 billion africans mm. with a gdp of 2.5 trillion dollars just yes, that's a lot of money we can negotiate with the chinese mm. we can negotiate with the americans we yes. can negotiate with india can sit but the as table. individual little countries that they made up in 1884 in the berlin conference mm. we cannot survive 1963 the inauguration of the uh, the then oau organization of african yeah. unity now That's African Union African Unity yes right there was a big debate between Kwame Nkrumah and Nyerere there were mm. two camps mm. Kwame Nkrumah was saying guys let us move mm. and be one block now yeah as it's time for little countries who will not 
survive. Mm. Because if we delay, it will be difficult to surrender individual presidents mm. for the collective African presidents. Like it is now. There's no leader with the caliber of coming Krumah or Gaddafi. Mbeki was close, but mm. he was not there. In that, in that, in that right. period. So Nyerere was saying, let's do it brick by brick. Let's build the Sadak kind of institution, yeah. Kumesa kind of institution, and then we will eventually come there. Yeah. In 1996, Julius Nyerere admitted in Accra, Ghana, that mm. Kwame Nkrumah was right mm. and we were wrong. Mm. Because yeah. Africa will never unite. Can you tell President Mnangagwa of Zimbabwe that you are now the Minister of Agriculture for Africa? No. Can you tell Ramaphosa <laughs> that he is going to be the Minister of Sports for Africa? No. Poor Kagame. Yeah. Poor Bia of Cameroon. That is going to be in... in, in, in yes. In so, as I have said, Africa needs leaders who understand that there is more to be gained. Mm by coming together than that which is lost. What will, what, what will it take, though? Because as you were alluding to this uh, earlier on, that it is not going to be easy for any leader now that is in power to let go of that kind of uh, leadership, that kind of power that is in, yes. to, be, to be elected as nothing, as a minister of foreign affairs, to go and stay in China while he was running his own country with his own GDP. How is how how can we go about it? Is 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 it is it talking about it in in in, in sort of institutions like uh, AU and all these kind of sadek meetings and stuff sufficient? Or we need they, to get they, we need to our, install to them that we are taking over now. The people needs to raise their voices. Why am I saying so? Because our, some of our leaders, they talk about it, but most of them, they pay a lip service. They don't yeah. action it. Yeah. One. And the other thing that you should also know is the conceptual West, European Union, the America, mm. they don't want us to unite. Or still, they don't want us to no. unite. Because as individual little countries, they exploit us. Obviously. Imagine America with their $16 trillion GDP. Mm. Right is entering into a bilateral arrangement with Lesotho. <laughs> with Lesotho has $2 billion who's, GDP. Who's, who's there to gain? Right. <laughs> the money that is collected by the city of Los Angeles alone in one day mm. is bigger than the GDP of Lesotho. Damn. Can you be friends with Patrice Motsepe and you be equal? No. He is taking an unfair advantage over you. No. We that can't. is what is happening. He's got more resources than me. Yes. He can exploit me in other ways that Very I don't understand. True. Because you know what they are doing? They can come to Lesotho, give Lesotho an extra dollar, say, give me all your gold. Mm. I give you an extra dollar. If Lesotho refuse, they jump on next to Swaziland. Yeah. If Swaziland refuse, they go next on to Togo. But in one... United Africa, that won't be possible. Yes, that, that is why we they will, don't want We will us. need to sit one-on-one. -on -one Do get... you know that South Africa and Zimbabwe alone mm. is over 92% of the world's platinum? Serious? Every car that you see, all those Lamborghinis that you see, the Ferraris that they are driving there, mm. they have platinum. Platinum yes. is used to make what is called a catalyst converter. Mm. A catalyst converter prevents uh, vehicles from emitting a lot of carbon dioxide. Okay. okay. So those Ford motors, those be they are relying on our platinum. Yeah. So if Zimbabwe and South Africa and the rest of Africa and yeah. Zimbabwe, uh, would negotiate as one block, you'd get a better deal. Mm. And the, there's this uh, also coal. I don't know what what it is that is in 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 Congo and uh, Coltan. Yeah, that one that is used for phones. And, yes, it's called yeah. a substance called Coltan. And that, that they say Congo that is, is really producer. rare. Yes. It's really rare. It's only found here in Africa. Yes. Congo is the number one producer of Coltan. That is why they don't want um, Congo to be free. Mm. DRC is a paradox and an iron at once. Yes, yes. Conservatively, cool. it is $34.1 trillion worth of mineral resources under a belly. Wow. The richest country on earth, mm. but the poorest nation on earth. Why? Mm. When one rebel group dies, another one is resuscitated. They and don't want the Congo to be okay because mm, of the resources. Know. They are looting the resources. They know. That is why Mobutu Seseko, 
mm. was able to rule the Congo for many years because he was their agent. Yeah. Whilst they are looting, siphoning the resources. Yes, they protected him. Yes. They pro but this is why we have uh, leaders like Mohamed Gaddafi getting killed. You see? Like this, with the, with the coups that no one knows where did it come from. Right. With, the rebe with, with the rebels that were nothing now, they, they had airstrikes and stuff out of the blue. I can tell you one story. Many years ago, a group of young white kids rich. Mm. We're having fun in Cape Town. Yes. They found out that uh, uh, oil has been, just been discovered in Equatorial Guinea mm. and they wanted it. They set out a plan to go if the, the, to the country uh, um, put go, under. Go, yeah, go into civil put wars chaos, and stuff. Right. Yeah. So they. The, the, the airplane took off from Cape Town, mm. stopped in Zimbabwe to pick up ammunition. Yeah. So intelligence system in Zimbabwe wondered why these young people mm, are picking up so, so much ammunition. Yeah, this uh, powerful ammunition just to go and hunt in Equatorial Guinea. <laughs> Upon the investigation, they found out that it was a coup in the making. It was used for that. No, the, 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 before they took off from Zimbabwe, mm. they were all arrested. Wow. The ringleader of that group was the son of former Prime Minister of Britain, Margaret Thatcher. Wow. Yes. Wow. This is a truth. And those those sort of things are, are very common here in Africa. Yes. Not not even not, not not even here in Africa, in in, in 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 the Middle East as well. Very true. In the Middle East, also in the in in, 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 in countries like in Asia, in those countries that have a lot of uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, oil and, and, and produces a lot of agricultural um, products and stuff. Mm -hmm. there, there are many destabilization that is there. They did it in Iraq. Look at the turmoil there is in, in, in Iraq right now. And Yemen. They said uh, <laughs> Saddam Hussein is preparing to slaughter others. Mm. He has ma weapons of mass destruction. There was no such they thing. They went there. They destroyed while they destroyed Iraq and while they were busy looting oil. Mm. Right. In, in the, the hands of in, was, in the hands of Obama, the no, African it was Bush. It was in before. the hands of uh, George Bush. Mm. Obama now played a role in, in Libya. In Libya. Look at the turmoil there is in Libya right now. Of course, mm. they said Gaddafi was a dictator. This and that, but there was peace in there his was, country. I've, I've, I've talked to many brothers and sisters from Libya yes. throughout la the, 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 the term of last year up to now, yes. trying to understand how were they living before, up, uh, what have changed up to now. Some, they would say, Gaddafi was not treating us well. I would ask questions like, how, what, what, what was he doing wrong? They said he was eating money. And, so, uh, 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 and then I would ask, was he not providing a free electricity, free housing, free uh, 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 health care, and all those things? said, yes. I'm asking, uh, do you get those things now? They are saying, there's nothing now. The, the country is in ashes. There is war after war. Yeah, there's, there's, the, the rebels are still fighting with, 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 uh, with um, Gaddafi's camp even now. NATO is still there. The airstrike is still going around there. Now I ask, so since now some of them, they are, they are staying in France, some of them, of them they are staying in, in, in Belgium, those who can afford mm. to, to, to run away. So I'm asking now, now that you are staying there, don't you regret the, 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 the killing of um, Mohamed Gaddafi? Some would say, no, I don't. Some would say, I do. But who are we to... To, 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 to judge what was was going on and say he was a detector and stuff. Who are we to tell which president and, and how to run their country, how much should the president get uh, uh, get paid in his own country? Okay, yeah. Um, as I said, Gaddafi might have been a dictator. He had his own problems. Mm. But generally, there was peace in Libya. Yes. Look at the turmoil with the is right now. And by the way, all these problems of individual or countries that are plunged into turmoil can only be solved by coming together. Yes. 
and 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 uh, Gaddafi was very in forefront when it comes to that. Yes, that is why he was the really out. trying. I, I I remember when he became a, a chairman of AU yes. around 2009, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Around that time, for that, yeah, yeah, he was he, he was he was he was in action. He was planning. There were there were there were what do you call? There were forums that were formed mm. to see that in 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 2020 in 2015 we must be we must be united. And then uh, after that, soon after that, the coup came in, and then it was killed. Yes, I'm sure the West knew that Gaddafi had the resources. He had money, and African leaders <laughs> respected him. Yes. If he wanted to unite Africa, he could have done it. Yes. So that's why they said no. He was on his way. Before this man <laughs> goes far, mm. let us take him out. Yeah, because and they did. if he planted that seed, yes. it's going to be too late. Very true. <laughs> and now you can see that uh, Kwame Nkrumah was a prophet. Yes. He talked about this, that. Mm. I've, re- don't I've listened to 1963 speech. Yes, I've listened to it, and I it, also did. Yeah, it was very. It was. It was. It was. It was a revelation of what is going on. Very he, true. he said all those things that were going to happen, yes. and they did happen. Yes. If you don't do this, this is what's going to happen, <laughs> and that was in 1963. Mm. And also remember that the people of Ghana took him out through a coup d'état. I remember I was reading about this thing. I was. I couldn't believe that. He died in a foreign country from from from. Uh, no, he didn't want to go in 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 in, in, the, yes, in he Thailand. Was taken out. He died in uh, in Guinea. Yes. He died in Guinea, and I've asked one one of the brothers from from Ghana the situation, and that that guy told me he told me that uh, I've met him in Worcester. He's a mechanic there. This guy is telling me that the people back then they couldn't understand the importance of unity in Africa. Very true. And uh, what he was doing, he was helping out other countries, and mm. we saw it as he was neglecting us yes. by going around and building bridges there, and building stadiums in those countries, mm. and, and and also assisting freedom fighters. Uh, uh, yeah, all the freedom fighters in other countries. Mm. We thought that when he was doing that, he was spending our money rec- recklessly, and he was he was forgetting about us. So that's why we took him out. And he's saying, uh, by now that I'm here in South Africa, I regret yeah. being part of that situation. Yes, because, <laughs> you know, when you are ahead of your time, mm. people will take you to your early grave yeah. and start celebrating you from your grave. <laughs> like, 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 Tom, like Thomas Sankar. You see, that was another great leader. Yeah. Yeah. They took him out and mm. now we celebrate him from his and grave. And when he took power, he cancelled all the... Um, the connections with the West because they were under France. Yes. Yeah, they were upper vault. Uh, back Republic then. of upper vault. Yeah, yes. Republic of upper vault back then. And I then he cut all ties. He, he, he took over and then he planted so much trees. He put people to work. He, he, he built schools, empower women. He made sure that the people are independent. And he made that great speech that the who he feeds you controls he, you. Controls you. By the time he took office, the literacy rate in Burkina Faso was 14%. Mm. By the time he left office, after four years, 60 something percent. I can't remember the exact number. And that is what we really, we, we, we really needed because even after Mwami Gaddafi took power, mm. the illiterate rate it was less than 15%. Yes. Look at now, Libya was flourishing. Yeah, Libya was one of the best. Libya was in in, 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 the, in the GDP per capita, it was one of the best. Yes. People were living like even you can see the cities when you are looking at, 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 at in the internet, the cities they they are beautiful. But when you, you took over, it was a desert. Yeah, very true. I did but, a good job. Yeah, but now I think the the, the problem with African leaders clinging into power is the problem. Ten years of leadership, I think, should be enough. Yeah, very true, because the leaders also need to understand that somebody with a new insight, mm. new energy, can be good for your country. Yeah. But we've got problems with um, your wearing seven, mm. Uganda. 
to go to Cameroon. Hmm. Uh, the one from uh, Equatorial Guinea, uh, I've forgotten yeah. his name, uh, Obiang for, Wema. Uh, for, I don't we know. had problems with Mugabe. Hmm. You see, all those, they, they want to stay in office like forever. And that doesn't work. That doesn't work. In most countries that have the uh, um, presidents that takes more than 10 years to 20 years, doesn't end well for them. Yeah. It doesn't end well. And you can see they, they get into dictatorship and people will be suffering. They get, the, the, the sense of human rights, it goes away. Very true. It goes away. You, you can't, can't stay in power for 20, 30 years and no. still remain at the top. No. Because even some of them will start very well. Mm. By the time they leave office or after many years in office, they usually fail. Mm. About what time did, did um, this genocide happen in, 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 in Zimbabwe of Matebele? It was or, or about what time when he was in power, Mugabe? Um, yeah, um, in fact, there are many genocides that happened in Zimbabwe, but most of them were silent and sure. some of them are indirect. Right, but the popular one, the Matebele genocide, started in 1982. Just two, years, just two years when he was in power. Yes, 1982 to 1986. What happened was this. Um, the way we are divided as Africans, because mm. the, 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 our former colonizers also made sure that they divided us among us in, tribal lines. Into pieces. Yes, among us even into lines. families. So let that alone, we can start alone. fighting each other. Yeah. Right. So the two major tribes in Zimbabwe is the Shona and the Ndebele. Okay, yeah. Right. The Ndebele are about a third of the population of yeah. Zimbabwe, and the Shonas are the two thirds. Mm. So what happened in 1980 at the election is Mugabe got support from the Shona people because he's a Shona. Yeah. And his main rival, Joshua Nkomo, got support from the Matebele. From the Ndebele people in Matebele mm. land. Mm. Now at independent uh, when Mugabe took power he punished the Ndebele people for not supporting him. They had problems of dissidents, and uh, okay. the issue is, is a bit complicated because, of course, the dissidents were there, mm. but the force that was applied in crushing them mm. was not proportion. It was not in proportion to, to the danger to the, that they posed. Yeah, to, to, they, they didn't cause too much danger. They raped women. They killed people. You know. Yeah. Uh, and so, the, I, I suspect. Zimbabwe needs a program of national healing, yeah. truth telling, and is that is is that is, is that thing still in effect now? In there is still tension. In the village in Shonas, yes. Wow. Yes. yes. After so many years. After so many years, yes. Wow. It's more because than remember, years. this was nineteen eighty two to nineteen eighty six. Yeah, it took too many. So it's only thirty four, thirty five years back. Yeah. So some of the survivors are still there, or the children of. Them, they are still of, there. Of the dead, uh, uh, you know, mm. uh, maybe if it was four, five generations later. Yeah, but and then now, say, but it's still indirect. It's still direct. Still yeah, there. it's still direct. Eyewitnesses are still very young. Sure. Imagine somebody was born in 1975. He's still, How he's still, old is he's still, 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 he's Torarize was was killed. Yes, then uh, they come back to that situation. Now, and uh, one interesting point is that remember they entered into a unity accord in December of 1987. Mm. Nkomo and Mugabe, or Zapu and Zan. Mm. Now the Ndebele people respected Nkomo because their leader Joshua Nkomo was still in government as vice president. Okay. When he died in 1999. Yeah. Right. In 2000, we went into parliamentary elections. ZANU-PF lost all the parliamentary seats in Matebeleland. Zero. They all went to the new party, the MDC. Yeah. So this can tell you that this unit was not... Yeah, real. it was not it stable. Had no roots. Yeah, it, it no was roots. not stable and it, it, was, it was manufactured. Yes. <laughs> it mm. was manufactured just to make because sure... They, they, they just swept the issue under the carpet and forged the mm. unit. Of which they were supposed to do the correct thing, truth yeah. telling, truth telling, and reconciliation. reconciliation. Mm. There wasn't such. Sure. Mm. And people left with those wounds. Yes. 
up until to this day. Uh, and these things actually are happening. Mugabe went to his grave without resolving mm. that issue. With, without apologizing to those people. Yes. Because people were saying that he needs to go and answer in the court of law for those things. Because most of those uh, ruthless things uh, were happening under his orders. And many uh, uh, things that happened after that the, the brutality that we saw in the in the in the years of Shangarai, yes. the brutality that we saw recently, those were the makings of Mugabe. Those are the same soldiers that were there in, in his in his in his time, and the police that are there in his in his time. He's number one executor of of of, of his shenanigans. Mm. Is the current president? Yeah, he was there. Their friendship spanned over five decades. Sure. Right. Even the Kukura wound, mm. the Minister that, that, of State Security can, at that Can you time, ex- explain the Kukura wound? Because many people, they won't understand what it is. All right. Kukura wound was a very sad part of the Zimbabwean history. Mm. It was a genocide in which an estimated 20 to 30,000 people wow. from Matebeleland and the Midlands provinces lost their lives at the hands of the army in Zimbabwe, wow. a section of the army called the 5th Brigade. Sure. They raped the women, they killed men. Like when it started, the Gukurawan, according to some eyewitnesses that we read, that we heard about, that we saw on the internet, mm. the leader, he recently died of COVID in the last two, three months. The captain? Yes, the leader. He was, back then, he was Keneo parents' ship. Mm. But he later on left the army as the chief air marshal. Okay. Right. So back then, in 1982, he killed 50 young men. They assembled the Ndebele people at a place called Entumba, mm. in Mlawai. And he accused the people of uh, uh, sabotaging the government. Mm. So he just picked 50 young men yeah. from the crowds and said, I want to show you what we are going to do to your, to your sons that... You, you, you sent for training to destabilize the government, and he shot them. In he, front of he, them? In front of the people. That's what they were doing. Survivors are there. If you Google on the internet, the sure. Matabel and massacres, they tell you that their husbands, their fathers were killed. Mm. Then they are forced to dig their graves. When they dig their graves, they are forced to bury them, or some were buried alive. Sure. And your relatives will be forced to dance on top of your grave, singing and praising Mugabe. Wow. Yes, survivors are, uh, are still there telling the story now. Thanks to internet, now information can, can, can spread. People are writing their books about these things. Yes, they are. There are, there are books people that can read about these things that, that would explain what was happening. Um, not really sure or I can't recommend, but there are books. There are, are books are, that people are, can are, search. Are, yeah. Search, yeah. Mm. I will also try to, po- to post them. If you manage to search them, right. because uh, I, I I read about it in, in the former prime minister of um, about the last prime minister of, of Rhodesia, Ian Smith, mm. of the resist Rhodesian regime. Yeah. In his memo called uh, "The Greatest Betrayal," <coughs> he wrote about the Matabeleland massacres. You yeah. wrote about it. Yes. Wow. And you know what surprises me is when Mugabe was busy doing that, mm. because he was not. Uh, attacking or touching the interests of the West. Yeah. They were busy praising him, giving him honorary degrees, he, yeah, making he was, him a symbol of yeah, leadership. Because he was, he was not destroying anything that is of value to yes, them. Yes, you see now. When he started to deal with the land... Yes, then they said, ah, you have stayed that, for too long. When that, that, that is, is of value to them yes. now. Mm. He's, taking, he's chasing the white people out and mm. doing all these kind of things. They were all silent. Yeah, ne. Mm. Man, you said the name is Kukura what? Kukura Hund. What does this mean? Kukura Hund. Kukura Hund is um, the rain mm. that drives away oh, the shaft. The kuku- first rains. Kukula Kuonke. Yes, yeah. the first yeah. rains that drives away the shaft. Yeah, is, that, that, mm. that, that's the meaning of that genocide that yes. was happening. So they were saying we are clearing the, the bad elements. Wow. Yes. And these things are happening in, in other countries also here in Africa, but... They are swept under the carpet. Yes, they we, are we, forgotten we, wars. We in, saw many, many wars happening in Rwanda. Yes, we saw. We're still seeing 
some of the stuff that is happening now with the rebels in in Mozambique. Yes, ISIS in Mozambique. Yeah, what is going on there? Yeah, um, I can say an Islamist group. Um, oh, there's, yeah, there's that is trying this to destabilize Mozambique. There's also these jihadis there. Yes. Mm. Uh, uh, mm. So, OE was discovered in that area where this uh, jihadist group is. Yeah, where, where all these things are happening. The wars that are in Africa are about resources. The bottom thing about all the conflicts of Africa. It's the resources. It's the resources. There are many wars, the forgotten wars that are no longer covered by the front pages of our newspapers. Mm. That, at, that have lost as many Africans. Yes. Look at Central African Republic, mm. Sudan, yeah. DRC, Rwanda, Tutsus, and what, what's the other? Yeah, but Rwanda is stable now under the leadership of Paul Kagame. Yeah, he's doing good. I heard he's doing good. I mean, economically, mm, but I just all... problems about human rights, yeah. Yeah, human rights issues. But... And and I I hear that we are we are we are going to be facing a, a sketch of the second phase of slavery here in Africa with China with China because yeah. people are being sold, especially people from Libya. Oh, that people yeah. from uh, in in the upper in the upper Africa, they are being taken and they are being forced into boats and being shipped to Europe to China. To all these countries to work for, for for a cheap labor, these things are happening in this day and age. It's being covered. People are sold for as less as two hundred and forty dollars. Yeah, it's 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 so sad. And uh, if we can go back to what Kwame Nkrumah said, yeah, it will uh, reveal. <laughs> yes, if you can also go back to what I said that until the day that uh, African leaders understand that there is more to be gained by coming together than that which is lost. Then we, will then never... we can talk of uh, a peaceful and prosperous Africa. Mm. But it's gonna be really hard for for these guys who are in the in the in the big seats now to move out. I think the youth is the future now. Yes, some <coughs> of the things, as Professor Lumumba always says, is a relay race. We might not achieve it in our lifetime, mm. but let's be the ones who initiate it. Yeah. Let's 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 start. Let's make something happen. Yes. But how can we start? What what is the possible way to start? Right. Because we have so much. I I we have so many groups even on on, on Facebook, on WhatsApp. We are strategizing, talking, but it never ends anywhere. People will just mm. keep on disappearing in the groups. You see. You know. You know. Remember what Kennedy, the former U.S. president, said. Mm. Don't ask <clears throat> what others can do to bring about change. But mm. what you what can, can do you in do? your own little small way. Mm. Yes. What can you do in your small way yeah. to, 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 to try to make change? Yeah, to make a difference. So that's like the message. Mahatma Gandhi also mm. said, be the change you seek to see in the world. Yeah. So that's a, that's a big message. Yes. If you, if whoever is listening now, if you mm. seek a change in Africa, be that change you you wish to see yes. start small start convincing a few people that mm-hmm. there's no there, there's, there's no difference between me and this brother there's no difference between that brother and that brother we are all the same brothers there's no difference from the brother from mm-hmm. Nigeria and brother from here mm-hmm. it's the same as your own brother that they're sleeping in the same bed is the first thing is to make sure that uh, the meaningless borders have fallen yeah. why am i saying so do you know that we have more Swazi people in South Africa than in Swaziland? Obvious. Swati? Obvious. We have more Sutu people in South Africa than in Lesotho. Yeah. So, have, what is the meaning of... We have more Zimbabweans, more Nigerians, the, everyone. The but are people are ours. People are, 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 staying, are, are staying nicely. There's no problems. The borders Why? are not ours. Yeah, I, I want to allude to this. I want to, I wanted to discuss this thing. There's this notion... Yes. That is keep on coming. That uh, there's, there's, there's these rivals between Nigeria and South Africa. There's, there will be always people who are saying Nigerians must go, uh, Nigerians uh, are this and that. Do you believe that Nigerians who are here with, uh, with their passport and their work permit, are, 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 most of them are problems? I don't believe so. 
an individual should be treated as an individual. individual. If I'm a drug dealer from Nigeria or a drug dealer from, from Kenya, South Africa or a drug dealer from South Africa, <laughs> treated as such. You'll be treated as a, as, as a criminal. Mm. Why do you give, want to give the whole nation? <laughs> yes, why do you want to give a crime a nationality? Yeah. Is crime. We don't want drug dealers, we don't want car jackers, we don't want human uh, traffickers. Yes. Mm. If you do that, you'll be arrested. Yeah. Why do you it say must Nigerians, be dealt with. Zimbabweans? Because or, I think this yeah. thing is 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 actually uh, what, what can I say? It's it's not shining light on the actual offenses, the actual uh, criminality. It's just being switched under the carpet with this thing of Nigerians must live. Nigeria, as soon as these things happen. How many Nigerian doctors? Yes, so and if you say and, 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 are and in, they are in schools they are, they are also teaching. Yes, South Africa benefited for, mm. because of its economy from uh, the human resources of other nations. Nations, yeah. Yes. Many teachers, I think they said, fifteen percent of teachers are not, are not from here in South Africa. Who are teaching? Particularly the lecturers at universities. Yeah, I can tell you that there is a great number of Zimbabweans. Yeah. There's also a great number of Ghanaians. Yes. In, in in especially in the high school phase, they say. They oh, are... you just reminded me. I I was reading recently that the number of doctors in New York City alone mm. is by far greater than the doctors in the entire of Ghana. The number of Ghanaian doctors in New York City is by far greater than the. The, the, the number, number of doctors, doctors in, the entire in, Ghana. in the yes. entire Ghana. Yes. Wow. Yes. That's alarming. So this thing of bringing Africa together, growing the economy, can it will also bring back those doctors. Yes. Yeah. And and the flourish. agenda should not just be about um, uh, the Africans on the continent. No. African diaspora. Africa. The so-called African Americans, mm. everyone of African descent, Africans in the Caribbean, yeah. Africans in Brazil, in Europe, yes, in they China. should be part of the agenda. Yes, you see, that's what we advocate Af- for. African American scientists, mm. all those we need them. We need them, home. yeah. Af- African Americans who are in sport, we need them, yeah, to yeah. come and play, yeah. Yes, very true. Very those true. who are, imagine how. How would trade would be in, 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 in all kind of sports mm. if we would unite as Africa? Then we say Africa is playing is playing against America. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Because in most people who are even even in soccer, most stars who are in Europe, in Brazil. They, are, they are they are Africans. Africans. Even in Brazil, those are yes. Africans. Mm. All true. those they pay, you can see Pele is an African. Yes. <laughs> and the, one other thing is during the time of slave trade. Mm. Those slave uh, owners or slave traders, mm. they were not buying. Uh, they, they were taking the best people from Africa. Yeah. So the best people of, of Africa are out they are, there. They are taken. Okay, they need them back. Yeah. Okay, they they, they, they back. took the best of the best. Yes, the best yeah. of the best. And, and the strongest. The yeah. Yes, you see. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Imagine now, in music, let's say. The, the, the reason why American artists get rich so fast is because there's 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 there's, 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 a, there's a huge number of people who are there. There's like it's like America has got like three hundred and something thousand million. million people. Yeah. Yes. So if you if you blow up, everyone is buying your music. You are guaranteed to to make that kind of man. But if I'm an artist here in South Africa, I blow, I blow up here, there's only 56 million people here. But if I blow up in Africa, if Africa well, is united, well, well, we, are, well, we, are, we are not interconnected as Africans. You see. This is what I was saying when I, <laughs> I, when I said uh, 55 million people. It's nothing. This chicken change it's nothing. vis-a-vis 1.4 billion Com- Chinese. Compared to, to, one, to 1.2 billion in Africans you that see. you can reach mm. if, if, he, if he's playing on national TV. National TV is playing all over Africa. That's it. You see. Then your your song is making instant millions with, with 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 the uh, royalties and stuff. Is playing national radio. Is playing national TV. Instant millions you are making. You are living for the for the longest time with that man with those royalties. Yeah, that's what is happening so in America. Everyone is a duty in Africa now to be an activist yeah. to make sure that the change that you seek to see 
you are that change. Yeah, you make that change happen. Because, you know, I, I have also noticed that, particularly in, in, in Africa, a lot of young people, mm. they are not uh, much concerned about social responsibility. Yes. All they are concerned about is maybe it's just academic excellence. One and looking good. Uh, working, uh, I, need, uh, I need to make sure that um, I excel in school. After that, I excel in my career. Mm. But if, if you are just one-sided like that, you don't impress anybody. No. What we need for, in order for Africa to move forward, we need a balance. Yeah. Academic excellence, social, social, social responsibility. responsibility. Academic excellence and radicalism. And at the same time, if you are in the streets, you are talking tough, making all the noises, mm. you don't uh, set up businesses, yeah. you don't get your degree, you fail in school, yeah, yeah. you don't impress us. No. We need academic excellence, social responsibility. Look at the most influential... First in, class, in, radicalism. Look at the, at, at the most influential people, the likes of uh, Sosbini, Tunzim, the likes of Trevor Noah, those people who are, who are, who are making Africa look good because they, 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 they don't forget about social responsibilities back here. Yes. They don't they don't forget plowing, yeah. Those mm. those are the first people that would would attack all the wrongdoings in Africa in even on social media. They would attack they, those are the first people that attacked clicks now when 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 we are having the problem with clicks and the, the bad hair and what what. Those are the first people. Those those kind of things are impressive, even though they are so successful in life. But if they don't forget about what is happening yes. with people and make sure that they they, they challenge the, the, the status quo and, and and get rid of the racism and in, in the root of it, those things are, are really impressive. Yeah, I'm 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 really glad you touch on that because the individuality of us is causing us to forget the social the social Very impact true. This because thing. now we, we we tend to think that when you are when you are working first of all when you study and then you are working you are driving a nice car you are wearing Gucci clothes and all the, you are the best employee you know, you that's, it. It. that's it you are no. you, that that's not you how we should play, be you don't play soccer you don't <laughs> sing in the square yeah. you are not an activist you don't attend you meetings <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's useless, but we need balance. A balance. Yeah. First class and radicalism. Mm. Challenging the powers that be and academic excellence. Who are the young leaders we are looking at now in Africa that you see that these guys are, they are doing good up um, to so far? Just pick randomly. The first one for me is a gentleman called Nelson Chamisa. Chamisa, yeah, I know him. I know he's from Zimbabwe, right? Yes, the opposition he's in leader MTC. in Zimbabwe. Correct, yeah. correct. Nelson Chamisa joined the MDC at its formation at the age of 21. Mm. Those are the, that is the kind of leadership that we are talking about. Mm. Be the change you seek to see. Mm. You don't wait as young as you are. You go, are go in. Yes. Mm. Of course, there are many others like I'm so much interested in politics, like Julius Malema. Yeah. It's, it's quite obvious. Bobby Wine in Uganda. Bobby Wine is doing yes. good. Is doing good. Yes. What, what what does this guy at Mutambara do? Mm, professor Mutambara. Oh, is he's a lecturer? Yes, he's a professor, oh. a robotics scientist. Professor oh, wow. Mutambara was a student leader in Zimbabwe. That guy is great. He wrote I listen a lot to a lot of his. Um, Mm. speeches and stuff. I listen to him also. He's I know him personally as well. Really? Yes. Wow, wonderful. He's, he's really intelligent, that guy. Very, very intelligent. Yes, mm. th that is the kind of leadership. He's a robotic scientist. Mm. But what we have been discussing now is what drove him from rocket science uh, into social responsibility. He ran a country as deputy prime minister and the inclusive government wow. of, 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 of Zimbabwe. Even now, he's still an activist. You know? uh, Those are the kind of leadership that... That you want. Yeah. So far, so far, do you think... Uh, this guy, who's this guy from Kenya? Is Kakao? No, uh, Kagame is from Rwanda. Is Rwanda. Who's Kenya this? is Uhuru Kenyatta. Kenyatta. Yeah, I've seen people, they're saying that he's doing well up to so far, but I don't, I've never seen in any of his speeches mentioning African unity and stuff. 
I think he's one of those leaders that will do good in their own country and just it ends there. Yeah, like many African leaders, they just concentrate on their little individual countries, you know. Which is, still, which is what is still hitting us very yes. bad. Mm. Yeah. yeah. In closing, just to, 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 to inspire those young people who, who wish to be social active, who wish to see Africa break chains, break down the borders, what would you say to them? Uh, I'll repeat what I said before. I will say... In order for Africa to move forward, we need young people who are focused. Focused. We need a balance. Mm. Academic excellence, yes. social responsibility. That's how we can become a successful civilization. Mm. If we embrace entrepreneurship, mm. academic excellence, social responsibility, and also challenging the powers that be. Radicalism. Yes. Radicalism. Yes. So, yeah, I'm very thankful that we managed to do this... Uh, episode i'm sure there's many more discussions to come um, because we, we just touched bases yes we just uh, touched we'll bases yeah in I, I would like next time to us to focus on a certain country no problem and go and go into its core of its problems no and problem. discuss it and then we'll focus on on the next we'll focus even on the north and in, in, in we just explore these, these, these problems that we are facing in, in, in Africa. Because many people, they don't know what is really happening in Africa. Very true. They don't know. They, they only think, uh, they only care about the, the movies and uh, the WhatsApp mm-hmm. and what, what. They don't understand that there are really issues, real issues that are happening. People are being killed day by day. People are being taken into slavery. China is exploring. Is exploring in this, Africa. These issues also affect their livelihoods. They do. Day to day living. They do. You can look at failed states. Look at Zimbabwe. Mm. The young people's best years have been wasted already. Wow. Yeah. And their children is also threatened. Sure. So everybody has a duty to be an activist. Yes. That's that's that. In, in this world. Only people that can relax are the people who are living life as large, people who are rich. But no one is living life large here in Africa. Very true. No, Very even true. if you can be buying your own Mercedes Benz, but you are not living large. That's not a generational wealth. Very that true. won't last you three or five generations to come. Very true. But I would say even if you are living large, you have a duty also to stand up for others. A responsibility. A special responsibility. Yeah, that's yes. what we are, that we were talking about. Yes. It's really nice to have these kind of conversations, man. Thanks. I look forward thanks to very much. meeting you again. Thanks, thanks very much, thank man. Thank you, thank you.